Nope. So today I'm going to upgrade this Amiga 1200 that I've fixed in the previous videos. So what I've got is uh, Amiga OS 3.2, which comes on compact disc for some reason. Don't know why, it just does. So I've had to copy that off on the PC because no Amigas that I've got have actually got CDs and actually my laptop doesn't have a CD either. I had to dig out an old laptop to do it. I also got the company that I bought it from to just burn me the kickstart ROM. So I'm going to stick those in. I actually got one for my Amiga 600 as well in case I want to do that one as well. Got one of these IDE to SD card adapters and this little thing which will I'm going to use to plug this into the Amiga. This thing will just make the hard disk light work. And I've got a little four gigabyte SD card. So I've actually already installed Amiga OS 3.2 on the PC using WinUIE. Now I'm hoping that I'm actually going to be able to just transfer that straight over to the Amiga. Uh, and the reason I did that is because this thing's on like 12 disks or something and the disk drive in this is a bit dodgy already. So I just wanted to try and install it on the PC where it's really reliable. I can just give it the ADFs and install it at high speed. Now if that works, I'll just do a separate video on how I did that because there were a few little Furbies that caught me out along the way. So um, if this does work, that's great. Uh, if not, I'm gonna have to find like 15 floppy disks because I don't have a GoTech and then clearly there's no CD drive in this. So I think the first thing to do is to get these kickstart ROMs installed. Does it say which one's the high one and which one's the low one? How am I supposed to know which is high and which is low? That one's got the lower number, 523524. So I'm gonna assume that this one is the low ROM. God, that is so stiff. All right, there's one. Ah, got it. This chip puller is just really hard to get these things out because you've got to put so much force on when they've been in for such a long time. And the internet says that the low ROM is actually this one here. So I was about to put them in backwards. Yeah, so also it looks like there's an extra pin on this socket that isn't used. So these actually go like, it looks like you're putting them in one pin off, but you're actually not. All right, that's the low ROM. Let's hope I've not broken anything. Got black screen. Is it gonna boot? Nothing. Got nothing. Oh, <laughs> no I didn't. Good God, that's that 13 second boot up time again, isn't it? Oh my God, it takes so long. Right, looks like I got the ROMs in, right? So there it is, I've never seen that screen before. 3.2 Kickstart ROM. So next job is to install this little SD card to ID adapter. And to do that, I've got one of these. KA47B rastport.com adapter. All this really does is you just plug this into the ID slot and connect this, that's it. But what it does is it's got this little chip on here that is just gonna modify the three and a half volt logic on here to five volt logic so that the disk light shows up properly. If you plug this in with just a normal little lead, you'll get your hard disk light on all the time. So that's all this really does. It's just a little adapter that makes the hard disk light working. But if you do have just a little lead and nothing else, this will still work but your hard disk light won't. So this is my little SD card that I installed with WinUAE. So that's going in there. I think this has got pin one marked somewhere. Pin one's marked there. And this has got pin one marked, has it? Pin one is marked there. There we go. So it goes in this way. So there we go. So that just connects that together. And then this bit just connects into the Amiga and it sits like this. Just careful not to bend any pins. That's the hard disk installed. So I can put this thing back together and we'll see what we get. So if my WinUAE install works, then this thing's just gonna boot Amiga OS 3.2. What are we gonna get? We're we gonna get hard disk light. Oh, something's happening. I can hear the floppy disk. So it's, it's definitely, I don't know if you can see that, but that is flickering. It was. Oh, look at that. That is it. It's on. This is amazing. So yeah, so I installed this. I installed this using WinUAE. Oh, come on. And I even made this stuff partition. 
and I've got an uninitialized partition as well. So that is what I set up in WinUAE. Excellent, so that works. Why can't I double click on Workbench though? Is my mouse not working? Oh yeah, I think that, that mouse is dodgy. Something gone wrong with it. I didn't plug it in properly, I don't know. There we go, that's better, All right. So it's on. So yeah, I did do this. I did this in WinUAE. I'm actually quite impressed that this works. So I did the install in the emulator uh, and it's all just working completely fine in here. This is actually running quite well. I like it. Yes. Haven't got any programs on here though. Really should have copied some stuff over to it before I did it. So I've made this like, you know, I've got a one point gigabyte partition here. Uh, what I really need is the program to get the compact flash working so I can get more stuff onto this. But I am actually quite impressed with that. That is really good. I don't really know what's different in uh, 3.2. I think it's got, what else it? has it got? It's got, oh, you can move stuff off the screen. Is that a thing now? Oh, look at that. It's like 2021. Amazing. Oh, resizable from all sides. We'll have that. Oh, yeah, look at that. Amazing. Uh, the other thing is, is I made a 250 megabyte partition for Workbench and it's used 6.5 megabytes, so that might have been overkill. But that is excellent stuff. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show that this, this, this was my test to see that this actually works. But I'll do a separate video of setting it all up in WinUAE because um, I think some people might just want to watch that on its own and they don't want to see this plugging stuff into the Amiga thing. Because uh, they know how to do that. So yeah, uh, in a separate video, I'll show you how I did the setup. Um, but I am quite impressed with that. That is really good. I now have an Amiga with a hard drive in it, which is very, very good. And I'm going to have to learn all the new things about Amiga OS 3.2 because I don't know what they are. It's got sound? Sound? Make sound? So it's now even got sound. It's like 2021. Oh yeah, I know it's got mouse wheel support, but I don't have a mouse wheel. <laughs> so there you go. So that's one, one thing. Oh, look at that. It's used a megabyte of memory already. Wow. That is utterly bonkers crazy. Right, so that's it for this video. Have a look at the other video if you want to know how to do the install. That will be done on the PC, basically. But I've just verified now that it actually works.